welcome to my youtube channel mechanical magic mechanical learning tutorials so in this video i am talking about some of the important terminology in the field of an thermodynamics so basically the steam so here just we can see steam which is defined as a water in a gaseous state or you can say a two phase mixture mixer is generally made with the liquid and a gas that will be called as a steam so generally for the generation of the electricity or by the application of turning of the rotation of a turbine such kind of steam is being used as a working substance some another application some another applications vapor the homogeneous mixture of minute particles of mother liquid or you can say water in a suspension with true gas of the same substance that will be representing as a vapor so basically as from the example liquid plus water vapor that will be representing as a steam some kind that will be the refrigerant vapor mercury vapor etc that all things it will be considering as a component of vapor so here as you can see most of the important to us is steam which is used in a steam engines steam turbines for the generation of a power or you can say the electricity so basically that will be having a uh, lots of applications in the field of engineering now one more terminology and that will be over here and it will be called as a pure substance so a pure substance is one whose chemical composition is uniform so that will be the important part into the pure substance so chemical composition is uniform and it remains invariant during the heat and work transfer with the surroundings so basically the chemical composition is uniform and that will be remains invariant during the process or you can say during the heat and work transfer with the surroundings so basically the examples is ice water nitrogen oxygen that all are considering as a pure substance or you can say that pure working fluid in the field of engineering so here we discussing with the steam vapor and pure substance so now we will see the basics generally such kind of questions it will be for the viva or you can say for the interview questions or you can say in the examinations of different universities so basics you can say the difference between gas and a vapor so so many having a difficulties to derive or differentiate between gas and vapor so just we see over here it is the state of substance in which the evaporation from the liquid state is complete so all the liquid that should be converting into the gaseous form so that will be called as a gas but in case of vapor it is the homogeneous mixture of many liquid particles in the suspension with the true gas of the same substance so it will be the two form liquid plus gases that should be representing as a vapor now the second difference of gas and vapor so in the gases part with the change in temperature and pressure gas remains in its gaseous state except the under extreme condition of temperature and pressure so not changing the phase but in case of vapor with the changes in the temperature and pressure a vapor can change undergo condensation or evaporation so if it will be condensed that gaseous part it will be converting into liquid if it will be evaporated so that liquid it will be converting into the vapor or you can say gaseous part 
so basic difference between gas and vapor now final points in the case of gas generally gas obeys all the gas laws like boyle's law charles law combined gas law etc but in case of the vapor vapor does not obey the gas law so this all are the basic difference between gas and vapor and the perfect substance so now we're discussing with the sensible heat so generally sensible heat it is represent the amount of heat energy to be supplied to convert a 1 kg of water at its saturation temperature corresponding to the given steam pressure so generally in the terms of the thermodynamics language enthalpy of the fluid that will be equal to specific heat of water that should be into ts minus 0 so ts is representing as the saturated temperature so generally in the case of the generating from ice to the superheated vapor so that will be the representing as a temperature when steam formation is started at constant pressure so that's why it will be the cp of water into ts minus 0 now the important term latent heat or you can say enthalpy of evaporation so generally the latent heat it represent the amount of heat energy needed for complete evaporation of saturated liquid into a dry saturated steam at a given pressure so generally that will be denoted by hf g third one enthalpy of superheated steam so further the heating of the dry saturated steam will increase the temperature of the steam at a given pressure so that will be called as a enthalpy of superheated steam in my past lecture we already discuss with the steam formation theory so enthalpy of superheated steam that should be equal to h superheated equal to hg plus cp t superheated minus t saturated so now we will discussing with the types of steams so basically the steam having the three types first one it will be a wet steam dry and a saturated steam and superheated steam so as from the classification of the steam starting with the first one wet steam or you can say in case of wet steam the water molecules and the steam coexist to form a two phase mixture that will be called as a wet steam so certain amount of the wet particles or you can say water particles it will be present with the gaseous particles so it will be make, making a two phase mixture so it will be said to be a wet steam second one dry and saturated steam so just you can see over here a steam at a saturated temperature or you can say ts as we already discuss into the steam formation theory so steam at a saturation temperature corresponding to the given pressure and having no water molecules extrain in it is known as a dry saturated or you can say dry steam so in that case in simple form the absence of a uh, water particles into the gaseous form so that will be called as a completely dry steam or you can say dry saturated steam further heating on to that particular dry saturated steam so it will be having a third category superheated steam so when a dry saturated steam is heated at a constant pressure its temperature is rise beyond its saturation temperature or you can say ts 
so the steam in this state is called as a superheated steam said so initially the water it will be mixed with the gaseous part at certain temperatures so that will be the condition of wet steam further heating is carried out so at some of the temperature you can say saturated temperatures all the waters it will be converting into dry steam and further the heated at constant pressure so it should be converting into superheated steam so basically steam having the three types wet steam dry and saturated steam and superheated steam now we will discussing the important part of the examination point of view or you can say calculation of the properties of the steam so here it will be the theory dryness fraction of the steam so generally a wet steam can have a different proportion of the water molecules and dry steam so in that case it is necessary to state a quality of the wet steam so generally it will be measured in terms of the dryness fractions so the quality of the wet steam is specified by the dryness fraction or it will be measured in terms of dryness fractions and it should be denoted by the x so which indicates the amount of dry steam present into the given quantity of the wet steam so dryness fractions as from the definition wise x is equal to generally mass of dry steam present into the wet steam divided by total mass of a wet steam see if we are assuming that the mass of dry steam present into the wet steam so it would be denoted by ms over here and total so it should be mass of water plus mass of steam so just you can see over here x is equal to or you can say dryness fraction is equal to mass of dry steam present into a wet steam divided by total so x is equal to ms divided by mw plus ms so the dryness fraction of the wet steam is always less than 1 and for dry steam it will be equal to 1 so in case of 100% superheated steam so it always it becomes x is equal to 1 for superheated steam so generally it will be in between 0 to 1 if the wet steam is being present now after the dryness fractions some more terminologies wetness fractions of the steam so in that case the wetness fraction of the steam is defined as a ratio of the mass of the water particles present into a known quantity of the wet steam to the total mass of the wet steam so similarly over here for wetness fractions so mass of the water particles divided by mass of the steam and mass of the water so now we will rearranging the terms so addition by one and subtraction by the one and it should be right like one minus ms upon ms plus mw so this term or you can say this equation that will be equal to x over here so in simple forms the wetness fraction that should be equal to 1 minus x of dryness fraction or you can say x so the most important part of the wetness fractions and that will be the priming so when the wetness fraction is expressed in percentage so it will be known as a priming so such kind of questions which we ask into the gate examinations now some more important part as from the exam point of view so degree of superheat so it is defined as the difference temperatures of the superheated steam and dry saturated steam at a given pressure or can say constant pressure so in the simple form degree of superheat it will be indicating as a 
टेम्परेचर ऑफ सुपर हीट माइनस टेम्परेचर ऑफ सेचुरेशन सो लाइक दिस सो वन मार्क्स क्वेश्चन इन एग्जामिनेशन अमाउंट ऑफ सुपर हीट सो द डिफाइन एज अमाउंट ऑफ हीट इज एडेड ड्यूरिंग द सुपर हीटिंग ऑफ द स्टीम सो इट इज नोन एज अ हीट ऑफ सुपर हीट सो एट दैट टाइम द अमाउंट ऑफ सुपर हीट दैट शुड बी इक्वल टू सीपी ऑफ वाटर पार्टिकल्स इन टू टेम्परेचर ऑफ सुपर हीट माइनस टेम्परेचर ऑफ सेचुरेशन सो दिस टर्म इट विल बी ऑल्सो आस्क फॉर द वन मार्क्स क्वेश्चन Now the enthalpy of the wet stream and a dryness fraction x. So just we consider that one kg of the wet stream of a dryness fraction of x. So here mass of the dry saturated stream it should be equal to x kg. So the mass of the superheated liquid in a wet stream it should be equal to one minus x kg. So from the specific enthalpy of that particular stream. H it represents as a one minus of dryness fractions into enthalpy of the fluid plus dryness fractions into enthalpy of fluid plus enthalpy of the fluid plus gaseous form. So finally, by the simplifications, H is equal to HF plus XHF G. So for one marks questions. So if you like it then subscribe and share mechanical magic mechanical learning tutorials thank you very much